In this Python data structure tutorial series, we will be looking at quicksort as usual. We'll go over some theory first, then we'll implement it in Python. And in the end, we have an exercise for you to solve. Let's say you have a list of numbers to short. Here, the first element is 11, and I will call that a pivot. And I will try to put pivot in its right position, which is this. Now, what is this position? All the elements on the left hand side of 11 are smaller than 11. All the elements on the right hand side are greater than 11. Now, if you look at the left hand side, 792 itself is not sorted. But what we are making sure is every single of that element is less than 11. Same thing for the right hand side. And once 11 is in its correct place, uh, we'll mark it as a background of gray and foreground of black color, which means this element is sorted. Now we focus on left hand side of an array. So we created literally two partitions. So we have left partition, right partition. Initially we'll focus on the left hand partition. So right hand side, I'm making it gray. Let's not worry about it. And left hand side, we repeat the same process. Imagine you have an array of 792 and first element you will consider it as pivot and then you try to put pivot in its right position. Now we are going to look at how to do that exactly but for now assume we have some way of putting this pivot guy or girl into its right position. So now we put this into right position which is in the middle and left hand side is elements uh, which are less than 7 and right hand side elements which are less than uh, greater than 7. Now we have two arrays. Left array is 2, right array is only single element 9. And when you have single elements they are kind of sorted. So now we can say that 2, 7, 9, 11 are sorted already. So whenever you see gray background with black foreground which means we are done with those elements. We are not touching them. They are sorted. Now let's look at right hand side which is 29, 15 and 28. Again we will say 29 is pivot and then we'll try to put pivot in its right position which is here. Now this created a left and right partition but right partition has nothing so there is only one partition which is left hand side which is 28 and 15. Again we repeat the same process recursively. You can see that this is a divide and conquer problem. We solve, we sort one element, which is pivot. We create left and right hand side of uh, partitions, two partitions basically. And we recursively repeat the same process on these partitions. So it is, that, that's the reason it's called divide and conquer problem. 28 is now in the right position. You are left with only one array, which is single element 15. And that is also sorted. So this way, the whole array can be sorted. Now going back to how we can put a pivot in its right position, this process of putting a pivot in a right position is called partitioning. When you put an element in its right position, you are creating essentially two partitions, left and right. And there are two famous partitioning schemes, ORA partition and Lomuto partition. Hoare is a British scientist who invented quicksort and his original partitioning scheme is more popular. So let's look at that. In here, we uh, come up with two pointers, start and end. So pivot is my leftmost element. Sometimes pe people use um, different positions as a pivot. Even in Lomuto partition, you will see uh, people use either left most element, right most element, or even a median element, medium, medium element as a pivot. But here we are using the left most as a pivot, and now we have start and end pointer. So we'll first focus on start pointer. That's the reason my end pointer, you see, it's a gray now. So let's focus on start pointer. So I will keep on moving start pointer until I find an element which is greater than 11. So we are 
going through these elements one by one, comparing them with pivot. Remember, that's important. You are comparing the elements with nothing else than pivot. And you keep on going till you find an element which is greater than 11. So 9 is greater than 11? No. So then you move on. 29 is greater than 11? Yes. So then you stop. Your train is stopped now. Now let's focus on end pointer. So my start is gray. My end is amber. I will keep on reducing end till I find an element which is less than 11. So 28 is less than 11? No. So let's move. 15 is less than 11? No. Let's move. 2. 2 is less than 11? Yes. Okay. So now my start and end pointers are stopped. All right. Now something interest is, interesting is going to happen. Now we found on the left hand side element which is greater than 11. Our right hand side it is less than 11. So we can naturally swap them because the entire purpose of quick shot is you want to put pivot which is 11 in a in a place where left hand side is all less elements right hand side is all greater elements so swap it when you swap it you get this now again you repeat the process after you are swapping done with swapping start the same process again so we start with start pointer now and start pointer we move from 2 to 7 because 7 is still less I still want to move it one more so remember the start pointer will keep on moving until you find an element which is greater than 11 so 29 is greater than 11 so now I will stop my start now let's start with now let's uh, do the iteration for end pointer for end pointer what is the rule the element 29 is greater than 11 so then move so now I moved and I came here now we stop this process whenever end will cross the start you know there is a start there is an end and when end crosses start here you stop when you stop at that time swap your end and your pivot something magical happened now well 11 is in its right place see this process is it sounds complicated but it's not actually all you're trying to do is put this 11 element in its right position and then you do the same process for left partition and right partition and if you keep on doing that the whole array will be sorted as we saw in the earlier presentation so this was Huarez partition. This is very popular. There is Lumoto, Lomuto partition. I don't know how to pronounce it, sorry. Lomuto partition. The way this works is you decide your end element as your pivot. You can decide your left element or middle element as well, but here the end element being pivot is very popular. And then your start element which is 11 you call it p index which is partition index and you keep on moving partition index till you find the element which is greater than uh, pivot see now i found 29 see i was 11 then i moved to 9 and then 29 now 29 is greater than uh, 28 okay so again just to remind you in this whole partition process we compare every element with pivot we don't compare it with anything else with pivot so 29 is greater than 28 that's why we stopped now we start another counter called i and that i starts with p index so i initially is same as p index it will keep on moving until it finds the element which is less than 11 so 29 is not less than 11 so it will move and it will come here and now 7 is less than 11 all right now something interesting is going to happen let's stop here let's do something interesting what is that Ooh. so now at this position swap 29 and 7 so when you do that uh, you're creating a left hand side which is less than 28 right hand side which is greater than 28 
okay now let's move on so now p index i will move so the rule for p index friends rule for p index is this you keep on moving till you find element which is greater than pivot so p index is 7 right now it is not greater than pivot which is 28 so you move now you came to 29 29 is less than 28 so stop so 29 is stop so once you stop p index then you worry about your i so i is a counter and the rule for i is reverse you move i till you find the element which is less than pivot 29 is greater than pivot which is 28 so i will move it so find 2 which is less than pivot now stop whenever we stop what do we do yes we swap so now we swapped it perfect again repeat it oh my god this repetitive process is boring but this is the art of computer algorithms it makes things efficient so p index again i move till i find an element greater than 28 which is 29 so again p index will be stopped here i i will move till i find element which is less than pivot which is 15 and whenever we stop what do we do we swap see 15 29 are swap they change the position again repeat so p index 15 you go to 29 again you stop i you go to 28 so that is less all right man i'm tired all right and whenever it is less what do you do you switch p index and i now you switch at this position you realize your 28 is in a right position 28 was our pivot now 28 is sorted it is in right position which means all the elements on the left hand side are less than 28 all the elements on the right hand side are greater than 28 this was Lumoto, Lomuto, Lumoto partitioning scheme. I don't know how to pronounce it. How about the big O complexity? The average complexity of this algorithm is n log n. Because if you think about it, if you are partitioning in less equal portions, every time the source space for left hand side, right hand side is reduced by 2. That's why it's order of log n worst case time complexity is order of n square when your list is already sorted if the list is already sorted uh, you will create very imbalanced partition which is you will have either left hand partition or right hand partition and you're not really effectively reducing the search space so for each element you are performing n, n iteration and you have n elements in total that's why it's a order of n square let's write python code now we are going to implement quicksort using huare partitioning scheme in pycharm i recently discovered this awesome mode called zen mode where you literally enter kind of like a distraction free full screen mode so i'm going to use it here i have this list of numbers which we saw in the presentation and i'm trying to sort them so the first thing we saw was the 11 was a pivot and let's try to put 11 in its correct position okay so that is the first thing we are going to do and that is called a uh, partition actually so when you do partition let's do this partition so i'm writing a partition function partition And once this function is done, I should have 11 in its correct position, which is almost in the middle of the list. This is the common uh, approach of programming, which is you try to sm solve smaller problem first, and then you evolve and you build your logic on top of it. So for now, in my brain, all I'm thinking is, I want to put 11 in its right position using the partitioning scheme that we just saw. So let's do that here uh, you will have this concept of pivot so what is a pivot so let's see so 
So first I will say pivot index. So right now the pivot index is zero. Okay. And pivot is basically this. Or let me just do this. Yeah. Or this, whatever. All right. So I'm just using variable, doesn't matter. And here we saw that uh, we want to uh, start with this pointer called start. So start pointer is nothing but what is it actually? So start is pivot index, pivot index plus one, right? And end is basically, you know, your last elements. And then first you want to start with start element and you want to move till you find a place where the element is greater than 11. So I can run maybe a while loop, okay? So while element of start is less than equal to pivot, Sometimes you might have duplicate element, so I will just say equal to as well. And you just, you know, keep on incrementing it. If you remember our presentation, friends, uh, where is our presentation? Yeah, here, see? What we did is uh, we were here and we kept on going until we found 29, which was greater than 11, and then we stopped. So that's exactly what we did here. You know, we went, through all the elements till we find something which is greater than until if it is less than equal to keep on going but then you stop also what we do is now same thing for end right so while element and if the end is greater than pivot you keep on going which is n is equal to n minus one. This is a short way of writing it. Okay, so we will now stop here. So we'll start with n and we'll stop here. So when we stop, now we want to swap those two, start and n. So here at this point, you just swap start and n. How do you swap them? Well, we can write a simple swap function for that. So Python allows you to do swapping in an easier way. You can just say a of b elements of i comma elements of j. Okay, let me write it. So you can actually do this. You can do this, uh, it will work. But just to make things more primitive, you know, I will just say, okay, I will use the old school temp variable method. You store first the first element into temp, then you say this b, and then b is equal to temp. This is a standard way of swapping elements in any programming language. And just to be in sh on a sure side, if a not equal to b then only do it because I don't want to you know if they are both same index I don't want to swap it okay now we are swapping what okay we are swapping start and end simple there is no rocket science here guys guys and girls there is no rocket science and just to be on a safe side I want to make sure if start is less than n because see you will stop this when end becomes less than start. You don't want to perform any exchange between start and end when end is less than start or, you know, so you swap only if start is less than end. So far, I hope it makes sense to you all. This is the code and when I run it, right click run. Ooh. 
oh we forgot to do one thing actually uh, remember once we come to this position we want to swap and with pivot so let's do swap what do we want to swap and with pivot okay so swap pivot index with and in elements array and when you run it you find that 11 is oh no 11 is not in a correct position something is going on okay after code examination i'm finding it that we are running two while loops okay which is start and end but remember we need to run an outer loop as well so when we swap between 2 and 29 we have to keep on going till and crosses the start you know start and end then if and crosses the start you have to stop it so there has to be a outer while loop as well so while start is less than and this has to be there okay and when you right click run tan -an, tan -an, 11 is in its correct position let me enter my zen mode enter zen mode Ooh. enter my zen mode okay i'm meditating now so my partition function looks good i need to now make it generic i did uh, pivot handling for the first element i need to now do it recursively so how do i do this recursively well hmm let's see there is something in partition element so i need to first here pass start and end element you know i was taking this as a hard coded values but this has to be made an argument and this will be start correct so now partition should be start and end start and end quick short should also have start and end because it's gonna be called recursively and start and end will be when you call it for the first time it will be length of elements minus one because list starts with zero index that's why we do minus one and hmm now we do this which will work but in the end uh, see when I put 11 it's in its right position like this I need to now recursively call quick short on left partition and right partition so whatever position I put this in uh, I need to return that index let's say this is a partition index so that index by the way will be what see the index will be end so end pointer is pointing to that right position so that is the position this is end so i need to return end here so i am returning end okay and that i will call it a partition index and once i have a partition index i have two partition so this is the pi partition index i need to now recursively call quick short on left partition which is starting from zero or start position to uh, this partition index minus one okay so i will be doing something like this and i need to call it on uh, pi index plus one and end as well i hope this makes sense this is a left partition okay left partition this is a right partition and how long should i do this process well if start is this then end because eventually like if you look at the initial presentation here uh, you will get elements which will be like start and end will let's say if you have one element the start and end points to same position let's say you have just two in your array then start and end if they're equal 
you want to stop it because that array is already sorted that's why i have this condition if start is less than and okay all right let me just quickly verify if everything is okay all right looks good right click run okay list index out of range that is the error i am getting okay let me come out of my meditation exit zen mode okay so right click debug see this debugging thing is very useful whenever you debugging allows you to go deeper into your problems uh, as if your surgeon is performing a surgery and doing a little investigation so we want to know why we got that uh, that error okay so when you do this uh, you will have this variable window where you can see the elements your local variable state and so on so i will just okay this one looks good So my start is zero and this is end. Okay, I keep on going. And you have to be patient actually to find out the problem. Okay, I find the problem. See what's happening here is the total number of elements is see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So your index could be at most six. And our start here, it just keeps on incrementing. When we are solving a problem for this array, 29, 15, and 28, see the element 15 and 28 is less than 29. So this loops, loop keeps on going. And whenever you see element, elements in bracket seven, see start value seven right now, is gonna fail because the maximum index that elements can take is six. So we need to put uh, some type of boundary check here which is while start is less than length of elements and okay because this this will make sure you don't go out of bounds for your given array and right click run the array is sorted beautiful it is working friends it is working usually when you're writing a program you need to write some test cases and what i mean by that is you need to test for various edge cases you know corner cases and what i mean by that is something like this let's say i have all these arrays and you want to sort it so i have one array which is empty one which is only one element i have an array which is sorted in ascending order I have an array which is sorting in a descending order. You need to consider all these cases and make sure your program works. So I will run quick short for all these beautiful test cases and make sure it works. And I find that it does work indeed. So you can see that all these arrays, you can just compare all these arrays are kind of sorted perfectly. All right, our quick sort using Huare partition scheme is over. As an exercise, I want you to implement same quick sort using Lumoto partitioning scheme. Here is the exercise description. You can find the link of this GitHub MD file in the video description below. I also have a link of the Python file, which I implemented basically this particular file here. I have a link of that in the video description below as well, so check it out. In exercise, uh, you can look at this Wikipedia link for QuickShot and you can go to Lumoto partition scheme and study the pseudo code which is mentioned here. So this is the pseudo code and all you have to do is 
write a Python code for this one. It should be fairly straightforward. I hope you try it on your own before you click on solution link. Clicking on solution link directly is going to give you a fever actually. So be careful. Uh, you need to try on your own. Coding is something you have to practice and then only you can learn it. By watching my video, you're not going to become an expert. You have to practice, 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 practice. I hope you're liking this tutorial series so far. If you do, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends on Facebook, WhatsApp, whatever medium. I'm gonna cover many more tutorials actually in this uh, data structure and algorithm series. I have a link of complete playlist in the video description. So please check it out. Follow all these tutorials. Data structures and algorithms are extremely important. They are very important during interviews. So if you want to crack coding interview for programmer position, data scientist position, you, you have to know this. For data scientist position, I think it's still you need to know not much, but for programmer position, you have to be really expert into this. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.